Today we've got a pretty interesting integral that involves a lot of the tools that we've developed in previous videos. So let's look at what we've got. We're going to evaluate the integral from zero to infinity of two x over x squared plus one times e to the pi x plus one. So there's a lot going on there. Now, what are we gonna use? Well, we derived this in a previous video. It also is related to the Laplace transform. We've got the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus ax times sine bx is equal to b squared over a squared plus b squared, and that is where a must be bigger than zero. I'll let you think about why a has to be positive there. Next up, we did this in a previous video. We derived this nice formula for the hyperbolic cotangent. It's equal to one over x plus the sum as n goes from one to infinity of two x over n squared pi squared plus x squared. And then finally, we didn't derive this, but it's fairly easy to derive just via the definitions of these functions. And that is the hyperbolic cotangent evaluated at x over two minus the hyperbolic cotangent of x is equal to one over the hyperbolic sine of x. Okay, so let's see how we're gonna get started here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is multiply the numerator and the denominator of this by e to the minus pi x. So that's gonna put everything in terms of e to the minus pi x instead of e to the pi x. And that's a little bit nicer because Something like that has a better limit on the interval from zero to infinity. Okay, so let's see. That's gonna give us this integral from zero to infinity of two x e to the minus pi x over, now we've got x squared plus one, and then we'll have one plus e to the minus pi x dx. Okay, great. And now what we'll do is observe that we can multiply by maybe a one minus e to the minus pi x and then use a difference of squares formula down here in the denominator. So in particular, I'm gonna multiply by one minus e to the minus pi x over itself. So one minus e to the minus pi x. So let's see what that's gonna leave us with. So we'll have the integral from zero to infinity. We have two x and then we'll have e to the minus pi x minus e to the minus two pi x. That's from distributing through that numerator. And then in the denominator, we're gonna have that x squared plus one, and then we'll have one minus e to the minus two pi x. Great, and that's from that difference of squares thing. Okay, cool. Now, what I'm gonna do is observe that I've got this Thing right here, which is x over x squared plus one. And looking at that, I realized I think I've got a typo here. I think this should just be b. And I can take that x over x squared plus one, and let's bring it out here. So x over x squared plus one, and I can rewrite it using this formula. So that'll be the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus y times the sine of x, y, d, y. Okay, so that's what we're doing. And maybe I'll put like a blue circle around this because it comes from this blue underline. So I'm gonna insert that into this integral. That'll beef it up to a double integral. I'm also gonna split it into two pieces across this sum. So that'll give me two times, and now I've got this double integral zero to infinity. By the way, I took that two out. And then for this first one, I'll have e to the minus pi x times the sine of x, y over one minus e to the minus two pi x. And then I have multiplied by e to the minus y uh, dy dx. That's my order of integration. And then I've got something similar here. So I've got this minus two and then my integral from zero to infinity and zero to infinity. And then I'll have e to the minus two pi x times the sine of x, y times e to the minus y. And then this is all over, well, that same thing. So one minus e to the minus two pi x. Okay, great. 
But now let's observe that both of these things look like I could expand them via a geometric series. And in fact, I can if I view the geometric series as having a common ratio of e to the minus 2 pi x in both cases. So let's expand each of those via geometric series and see what that leaves us with. So I've got my integral 0 to infinity, 0, 0 to infinity. And then, well, I'm going to make an e to the minus y here. And then perhaps I'm going to put everything else inside. So let's see, or maybe I'll have my sine x, y outside as well. Okay, so sine x, y outside. And then here I'll have the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of e to the minus two n plus one times pi times x. So that's for this first bit. And I guess we can see that because we have a common ratio of e to the minus 2 pi x, and then we have a starting term of e to the minus pi x. That's how we get that minus 2n plus 1. And then for this next one, we'll have the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of, well, that's going to be e to the minus 2n plus 2 times pi x. And then dy by dx is still my order of integration here. And there I use, well, I've got the same common ratio for my uh, expansion. I just have a different starting term. And now the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to do it all on this one line. I'm going to exchange the order of integration. Okay, so everything is like absolutely convergent here. So that's totally fine. And then I'm going to view this sine of xy as being multiplied into these exponentials. So I'll just put like maybe a little square in front of each of these exponentials. But this e to the minus y is just a function of y. So that means I can integrate out all of that orange stuff without worrying about the e to the minus y. But integrating out all of that orange stuff can be done again with our formula over here. It's just like a little bit more complicated. Notice uh, since I'm integrating with respect to x, my b term will be y. But then my a term is going to be this minus 2n plus 1 times pi or uh, minus 2n plus 2 times pi. Or I guess the minus sign's built in, so it's just 2n plus 1 times pi or 2n plus 2 times pi. Okay, so that being said, when all is said and done, we have the following. So we'll have the integral from 0 to infinity. We have an e to the minus y out of everything. And then we'll have the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of, so we'll have 2y over, so this is going to be 2n plus 1 squared times pi squared plus y squared. So that's from applying our formula over here to this sine function and then this exponential function, and then bringing this 2 inside. And then we're going to have minus the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of, let's see, in this case, it's going to be a 2y in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we're going to have 2n plus 2 squared times pi squared plus y squared. So, and then let's see, that'll be all dy at this point. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment. So now, I'm going to do a couple of things kind of all at once. So I'm going to observe here that the only things that are multiplying this pi squared are odd squares. So if I add evens into this, then I can change this so it starts at 1 and just replace this 2n plus 1 squared with plain old n squared. That means I'm capturing summing over all of the natural numbers instead of essentially what I was doing before is just summing over odd terms. But if I add the even terms in here, well, that means I need to subtract out the even terms here. But notice I only have even terms here, so subtracting here will just change this 2 into a 4. But then I can also re-index this so it starts at 1, and then this will simply be 4 squared times n squared. Sorry, not 4 squared, 2 squared times n squared, which is obviously 4n squared. Okay, cool. 
So now let's maybe bring this up to the top and then we're actually pretty close to the end. So if you've stuck around this long, thank you. And if you're liking the video, make sure to hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. It really helps us out. Okay, so let's look at where we are. We've got this big sum inside of an integral, but notice that these two portions of our sum look an awful lot like this tool that we developed in a previous video for the hyperbolic cotangent. Notice that all we're missing is a one over X type term. In this case, it would be a one over Y type term since that's our variable. So that means if we add and subtract it back in, we should be good to go. We also need to mess around with the index here. Well, maybe the four here a little bit because we don't exactly have what we want. Okay, so let's do all of that in one step. Okay, so we'll have the integral from zero to infinity, e to the minus y, and then we'll have one over y plus, our sum is in goes from one to infinity of two y over n squared, pi squared plus y squared, and then minus one over y. Okay, so check it out. I added in the one over y, and I subtracted off the one over y as well, so I didn't add anything yet, but now we can think about these two terms being grouped together in light of our formula over here. Now we're gonna do something similar for the other bit as well. Here I'm gonna add one over, or sorry, that should be two over y, and then subtract two over y. And then I'm gonna write this in kind of a clever way. This is gonna be the sum as n goes from one to infinity of, let's see, it's gonna be two times y over two over n squared pi squared plus y over two quantity squared. So essentially what I did is I just divided the numerator and the denominator by four and then rewrote it a little bit. But now uh, let's see what we've got. If we think about these two terms being grouped together, again, that looks fairly similar to our formula over here for the hyperbolic cotangent. And then of course, these two one over y type terms can combine together and simplify. So let's see what that's gonna all leave us with. We have the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus y and then that's gonna be multiplied into the hyperbolic cotangent of y, that's from the blue, and then minus this hyperbolic cotangent of y over two, that's from the magenta, and then plus one over y, that's from the purple underline. But now we can go ahead and use this last formula, which hasn't been proven in a previous video, but maybe that would be a good homework exercise to write this as the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus y, and then we have one over y minus one over this hyperbolic sine of y dy. And then, well, that's gonna lead us to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus y over y, and then minus two times e to the minus y over one minus uh, e to the minus 2y. Oh, I missed a 2 here. There should be a 2 up here as well. And that's just by using the definition of the hyperbolic sign and moving some things around a little bit. Okay, so now let's bring this bit up and then do the last couple steps. All right, so here's that integral we left off with. And now we're going to perform one round of integration by parts on this portion that I'm underlining in green. The second integral can be done with a simple substitution, but we're not gonna break it into two integrals um, because you'll end up with two integrals that don't converge, whereas these two integrals put together do converge. So let's see, for our uh, integration by parts, we'll take u to be equal to e to the minus y. So that's gonna make du equal to minus e to the minus y dy. And then of course dv has to be the rest. So that's gonna be dy over y, meaning that v is equal to the natural log of y. Okay, so let's see where that leaves us. So here we're gonna have e to the minus y times the natural log of y minus the natural log of one minus e to the minus two y. So that's what we get from this second term. Again, that's just a simple substitution. And then we need to evaluate this from zero to infinity. And then of course we have our minus VDU term as well. 
So that's going to be plus the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus y times the natural log of y dy. Now, we actually did something with that integral previously on the channel as well. We saw that that was minus gamma, the euler masher or any constant. So we'll use that fact. We'll also observe that if we plug in infinity here, we'll get zero. What we're really doing is taking a limit as y goes to infinity. So we just have to see what happens with the lower bound. Again, this is discontinuous at the lower bound, so we need to look for a limit. So that means this is going to turn into the limit as y goes to zero from above, I guess, of the natural log of one minus e to the minus two y minus e to the minus y times the natural log of y. The order of subtraction changed there because it was the lower bound of integration. And like I said, this is minus gamma. Now we're going to do a bit of a trick. And that is, observe that we can simply replace this e to the minus y natural log of y with the natural log of y. Now, why is that? Well, near y equals 0, e to the minus y is essentially equal to 1, whereas natural log of y is trending towards minus in infinity. So that's the dominant term. You can also prove that if you were to compare this function with the natural log function in a quotient inside of a limit, you would get one, which means that you can replace that within a limit. Okay, so anyway, needless to say, we can make that replacement. But that's actually good news because now we can apply a logarithm rule to write this as one minus e to the minus two y over y. Then, of course, we have this minus gamma still hanging on. Now, we can use L'Hopital's rule here to, let's see, exchange this for what? So, it's going to be 2e to the minus 2y, and that's it, because the derivative of the denominator would be 1. And I guess here we're using the fact that we can bring this limit inside the logarithm because the log is a continuous function. So we did kind of did a couple things there at once. But now notice if we let y go to zero, this term is going to go to two. It's within a natural log. So that in the end, we get the natural log of two minus this number gamma. And that's a good place to stop.